What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf Gallarhorn Blaster from the video game Destiny. This blaster is a spring-powered shell-using blaster that shoots three mega darts or three elite darts at the same time, meaning it's a shotgun, but it looks like a missile launcher. This blaster is absolutely gigantic. It has a really cool shell. So let's get into it. Included is the blaster, disassembled, mega darts, elite darts, shells, and the instructions. External overview of this blaster starting up at the front. There's no in strike barrel lug, just this really cool shell feature. I personally do not play the video game Destiny, so I'm not really familiar with the missile launcher from that video game, but the shell details in this blaster look really cool. But moving up to the priming handle and the breech system. So to load this one, you pull the whole top of the blaster forward, which opens up this little flap and exposes the little shell holder right here. And this blaster uses shells. These are unlike any other Nerf shell on the market, so they are proprietary. But the blaster comes with four shells, three orange ones and one gray one. The orange ones shoot three three mega darts at the same time. It's a shotgun. The included mega darts are black, but they are just regular mega darts. And it comes with one gray shell, which shoots three elite darts at the same time. Again, a shotgun. Loading up the shells is super easy. You can just front load your three darts like that. And once you have your shell loaded up, you want to put that into the blaster. There is a little notch in the top of the shell, which has to be aligned with the notch in the blaster here. So you align that slot, let it set in, and then push it in. Then you push it down. You can shut the flap. And now your shell is loaded and you're ready to prime the blaster. This entire top chunk here is essentially the priming handle. So to prime, you pull the whole Thing back. This has got to be the biggest priming handle I've ever seen on a Nerf gun. And after I pull that back, the spring is primed back and I'm loaded, chambered, ready to fire once. So now when I pull the trigger, all three of those mega darts shoot out at once. It's a shotgun. And to reload, I pull this forward. This thing opens, which also flips up the empty shell. Then you fish out the empty shell. It is a little cumbersome. Then you load in another full one and repeat the process. And you do that process every time you want to shoot. The rate of fire is pretty slow. Using the blaster is fairly straightforward, but because of the size, it is a very clunky, cumbersome blaster to reload into shoot. And it's surprisingly difficult to fish out the empty shell. It's not like a super pleasant experience to get that empty one out. Other than retrieving the empty shell, loading in the shell, shutting this, and priming the blaster feel pretty good in alignment with what we can expect from Nerf as a company right now. And loading the elite shell is the exact same process. It just shoots elite darts instead of mega darts. So that is the chambering and priming area. But now getting to the grip, this grip feels very different because this is a flipping missile launcher. It's not just like a rifle or a pistol. Now the grip itself is actually pretty comfortable, but the bottom of the trigger guard is unnecessarily sharp. And given the weight weight and clunkiness of this blaster, this sharp ledge really dug into my middle finger during my testing procedure. It was really quite annoying. Furthermore, right behind the grip, there's this little extruded piece of plastic right here. But boy, it really rubbed into my wrist. I had a red mark after testing this blaster, but the ergonomics of the grip really dug into my hand and it really tore into the play experience for me. But more on my grip complaints in my opinion. Moving down to the front grip, this is not a removable component and it doesn't collapse or fold. Once you stick it in there, it locks in place. But it is a nice convenient place to put your left hand to help you aim like this. And moving to the left hand side, of the blaster, there's a scope mounted on the left-hand side. This is a battery-powered unit. To turn that on, you can flick the switch right here. And this unit runs on two AA batteries. These batteries are not related to the rest of the blaster, so if you don't install them, you'll still be able to shoot the blaster, cycle the shells, and do everything else just fine. The batteries are only responsible for that little red light. And you can't actually look through the scope. They use this piece of distorted plastic in there. But the red light lights it up and it hits the diffused plastic, and it does look really cool from the outside. But there's this little cover plate right here which snaps into place, which covers the battery door. And this thing kept snapping off during my test testing procedure. It does technically click into place, but the retention isn't very good. I kept losing this piece. But that is the scope or the sight. Moving back to the stock, there's no little compartments or anything else to manipulate. It's just a big tube. It looks pretty cool and it's quite comfortable to hold it like this when you're shooting it more like a missile launcher because it is a missile launcher. It's not really a shotgun in the game. However, the stock is also not removable, which given the size and scale of this thing is super annoying. But no compartments or anything else to manipulate back here, just really cool shell work. So that is an external overview of this blaster. Now I'll show you the blaster firing. Shooting the included black Nerf Mega Darts and standing blue Nerf Elite 2.0 darts out of the gray shell. First the Mega. Now the 
Lee. Now to elite. Operating this blaster is a very unique experience. It is a gigantic blaster. It is so big, it shoots in a very unique way. You throw it over your shoulder like a missile launcher. It's pretty cool. However, the loading system is not as refined as I thought it would be, and the performance is really quite bad. Shooting mega darts is practically unusable. It's really lame. However, other than the cover plate on the sight popping off repeatedly, I did not experience any jams or malfunctions with this blaster. The firing portion of the blaster did work as advertised. And to compare the firing performance to other Nerf blasters, I put it up in my chronograph. And shooting three mega darts at the same time achieved an average velocity of 35 feet per second, and shooting three elite darts at the same time, 54 feet per second. So this velocity level is in alignment with other elite blasters that shoot three darts at the same time in shotgun form. I'm not sure I've tested any that shoot three mega darts at the same time, but it is the same power going into the mega and elite. So obviously it makes sense that it shoots the mega way slower. So it shoots pretty slow, but that is to be expected shooting three mega darts at the same time. So that's the objective information I can provide in this blaster, not to my personal opinion. Overall, my opinion on this one is pretty mixed. So as a foam flinger and not a prop guy, this blaster is super lame. The performance with the mega shells is totally unusable. It's not even fun. It shoots them like 15 feet. It's not 2005. Our blasters need to shoot in a straight line for at least 30 feet to be fun. But that's just with the mega shells. With the elite shells, it is fun and it is shooting just like the other elite shotguns on the market right now. But they only include one elite shell and part of the funness of using this blaster is quick swapping the shells. Next, the usage is not what I was expecting given the price point of 185 US dollars. First, opening this up and retrieving the empty shell is way more annoying than it should be. You really have to fish it out. It's not really pleasant to retrieve your used shell. Now once you have a loaded shell to put it in there and to finish the cycle, it is pretty cool. And that part of the system does work pretty well. The prime strength is totally manageable. This part is super wobbly, but I think it works. And after you prime it, you're not really putting any weight on it. You'll be walking around with it like this, so I think that's fine. But what made this blaster really uncomfortable was the grip. The bottom of the trigger guard right here got really annoying on my middle finger. And there's this sharp ledge right here, which really just bites into my wrist. It's really not comfortable. When you're walking around with it with two hands or you're resting it on your shoulder, it's not a problem at all. But to load this thing, you need to completely take off your offhand in order to cycle the system, meaning all of the weight is in this right hand and all of this pressure is going into my finger and into my wrist. So actually using this blaster is not as much fun as it could be. Now it is big and clunky. If I were like five foot, you could say, well, you're just not big enough. But I'm 6'4", 240 pounds. I am not a small human. I should not be too small or too weak to use any toy on the market ever. And because of how the grip is designed, it's a little bit unwieldy. It's uncomfortable to try to use this. So I think they should have reworked the grip area to be more comfortable, which really would have made it more comfortable to shoot repeatedly. But again, that's my opinion as a foam flinger, as a nerfer. And let's be real, this blaster was not designed for people like me. This blaster was designed for prop people. So my opinion on it from that perspective is very positive. I think this blaster looks visually awesome. They say it's to scale and I believe it. I'm not a Destiny player, so I can't really speak to that, but it is gorgeous. It is absolutely massive. I really dig the shell lines. This is gonna look so good with a paint job, especially with some dry brushing. And if you're a prop oriented person, you might shoot it a few times, but you're not really gonna care about it. You wanna look at it. And if you're most Mostly looking at it and only shooting it occasionally, I think it does a really good job. But even for those people, two more complaints. First, once you assemble it, it all snaps together and you can't take it apart again. It would have cost Hasbro like 25 cents in manufacturing to put a little button here to take this off. They've done it before, but for this one, they chose not to for some reason. So it's really cool if you want to display it, but then if you change your mind and you want to pack it up and put it in your closet for a few months, it's a pain in the butt because it's so dang big. They should have made these parts removable. That's going to be a huge inconvenience for the majority of people who buy this. And my second complaint, they should have included a stand like with the Needler Blaster. This thing is such an awkward shape. It doesn't stand
stand up on its own. And since you can't take it apart, is it supposed to be a full-time display piece? Yeah, maybe. So include a flipping stand, Hasbro. What the heck? A Springer for 185 bucks with no fancy electronics, like with a needler? Come on, put in a plastic stand. So you can't collapse it and store it, and you can't display it without building a custom stand. So what are you supposed to do with it when you're not playing with it? That's just annoying. So those are my major complaints in my opinion. Now to the question, to buy or not to buy. Obviously, performance-oriented nerfers, no way, Jose. Go buy a Shellington Spring Thunder, go buy a Shell Strike, something else. There are other shotguns that are war practical. This is obviously not one of them. But Hasbro knew that. It's not designed for us. To buy or not to buy to the prop people. If you like the way that it looks and you don't mind it being gigantic and you plan to mostly hold it and look at it and shooting it only occasionally, yeah, I could recommend you buy this one. It is fun enough to shoot occasionally if shooting it is not why you're buying it. It is way more fun to have a prop that shoots, albeit very poorly, compared to one that does not shoot at all. And the ergonomic issues that I mentioned are not as big a deal if you're not actively cycling the system. If you're walking around with it with two hands on it plus resting it on your shoulder, the grip issues I complained about aren't as big a deal. They are mostly annoying when you have to break your grip in order to prime and load in the shells, and all of the weight is on that one hand and the grip issues are magnified. But if you mostly just want to walk around with it and look cool, and you like the way that it looks, yeah, check it out. And these are going to look so good with a paint job. I can't wait until the prop people paint some up and put the pictures online. So that's a mixed purchase recommendation. It really comes down to how often you're going to shoot it. The drivetrain works, but it's just not that good and it's not super fun to shoot. But it visually looks awesome. I dig the shell quite a bit. But if you're a cosplay person and you're going to a convention or something, you might put a little bit of hot glue on this to secure this shield. Otherwise, this is going to snap off during your event. You might like lose it somewhere. So hopefully I've laid out everything in a useful way to inform your purchase decision. If you'd like to buy one of these, I'll put a purchase link in the description box below. That's it for this video review. Thanks so much for watching, bros. And as always, stay tactical. Thank you.